Good morning everyone. It's another beautiful Sunday and I'm excited that we can all gather together to worship the Lord and he deserves all our worship and all of our praise. Thank you so much for tuning in again today. Thank you for connecting with us for another online service. And my, it's already July. Half of the year is already gone. But we give thanks to God. July is actually a very special month for my husband and I. Tomorrow marks our 35th wedding anniversary. Yes, 35 good years of God's faithfulness and God's loving kindness towards us. And we have so much to be thankful for. And I know you too have a lot to thank God for, even all throughout the weeks that have passed. So, before we go into the service today, let's just read a scripture together to remind ourselves of how much we can thank God for. Let's read Psalm 103 from verse 1 to 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Well, let this psalm just encourage you to recall how much the Lord has done for you. Let us pray. Father, we give thanks. Thank you for another Sunday that we can come to worship you. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. Even as we've been reading that you forgive us all of our sins, that you heal us of all our diseases, that you crown us with your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Father, we thank you that you continue to renew our strength and renew our youth. We are so grateful to you, Lord. And we come today and enter into your presence with a grateful heart, with thanksgiving in our heart for all that you have done for us over the last six months and for all that you will do for us for the next six months. And Lord, we commit the rest of this service into your able hands. We ask that you bless us. We ask that our time will truly be uplifting and encouraging. And at the end, we will give you all the praise for all that you will do in our midst. Thank you for hearing and answering, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Can we all rise as we worship the Lord together? The atmosphere is
Lord, we just thank you for that time of praise and of worship, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because truly it is a privilege to be in your presence and to sing to you and to worship you and to adore you, Lord. You are worthy of all of it. Lord, we just thank you for this service. We thank you for everybody tuning in today, Lord. We pray that it will be an impactful and a great service going forward, that every life and every heart will be touched, Lord, that is tuned in this morning. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Well, good morning, church, and I hope that you enjoy that time of praise and of worship. I know I always really enjoy the online worship that we get every single Sunday. So church, we are officially in the second half of 2020. Wow, what a year it has been, right? <laughs> Definitely one to go down in the history books. Well, I hope that you have been enjoying recently the further easing of the lockdown, that you've been able to spend time with friends and with family that you haven't been able to see in a very long time. And a few more groups, I know a few of us haven't been seeing loads of people but a few key people and it's been really good to have that intentional time together. Well just before we go ahead with the rest of the service I just wanted to share a couple of thoughts with you, some things I've been thinking about recently. Um, so a couple of Wednesdays ago Pastor Shola spoke on pleasing God with our thoughts. How many of us know how difficult sometimes that can be and how easy it is to have negative thoughts? And that's something that, to be honest with you, I have been battling with the, the last kind of couple of weeks. You know, thoughts of not being good enough or thoughts that of just not being worthy enough or thoughts that you're not doing enough and that, you know, there's so many other great people out there and just kind of viewing yourself in a negative way. And how many of us know that that's so easy to think about yourself, but just hearing that word, I was encouraged that those negative thoughts should not take place in my heart and, and or seep in or stay there for too long. And that we have power as Christians to overcome thoughts that are negative that come our way, untrue thoughts that come our way. And that actually as Christians, we have the power that God has given us the power to repel those thoughts. And that's what I've been doing more intentionally over the last couple of weeks since hearing that word. And I wanna encourage you to do the same. And one of the scriptures that she shared that was really key, that really stuck with me, was 2 Corinthians 10 verse five. And I'm just gonna read it from the Passion Translation. It says, we can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God. I'm gonna stop right there, just because it's so powerful. It's saying we can demolish deceptive thoughts. Deceptive thoughts are thoughts that are not, that are not true, that are not godly, that are not honest, that are not pure. They're deceptive, they're, they're, they're put there to deceive us and to stop us but we can repel against those things. It goes on to say, and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture, like prisoners of war, every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. That is so powerful. When I read it again and again and again, I thought to myself, 
I actually just started picturing myself capturing those thoughts, those negative thoughts, those thoughts that want to stop us from going forward. And imagine yourself literally imprisoning those thoughts and capturing them and, and pulling them down because they have no power over us. And the more that we do that, the better and the stronger that we will become. So I hope that you will join me in repelling every negative thought that tries to come your way for the rest of this year and that you will stand true to what God says about you and what his word says about you. And his word is so amazing because even though negative thoughts will always try and come, we always have his word to repel against it and to believe in the truth of his word. So I hope that encourages you. And with that said, why don't we all welcome our pastor for today. Pastor Tony. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept, until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, Please, bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Well, hello church. Thank you so much again for joining us again today. And I hope you've had a really pleasant week. Can you believe it? We're in another month. We're in the month of July. And this month we have a different theme. Our theme for this month is it's time to advance. Amen? It's time to what? It's time to advance. You know, many of us have been stuck at home and it's time to advance. If you've heard me teach over the last few years, you will know that I love Bible stories. And I love Bible stories for two reasons. The first reason is that there is a story in the Bible for every situation that you will ever face. It doesn't matter whether that situation is financial, it doesn't matter if it's relational, if it's emotional, it doesn't matter if it's spiritual, it doesn't matter if it's your career or if it's about your children. There is a story in the Bible for everything you will ever face. But another reason why I love stories in the Bible is because God has hidden gems of divine wisdom in every story for us to find. Let me say that again. God has hidden gems of divine wisdom in every story for us to find. And you know, our story today is no different. So what I want us to do is just prepare our hearts. I want us to pray and prepare our hearts and allow God to use this story to bless us tremendously today. So let's pray. Precious Father, we want to thank you again for your love and your kindness and your goodness towards us. We thank you for another opportunity to feed at your table and we approach you today with a humble heart and we ask that you open our eyes and open our hearts to see marvelous things from your word today. Anoint me to speak words that are clear. Anoint me to speak words that are accurate and anointed to minister to the needs of your people today. And we pray that after we have heard your word today, we will, be all, we will all be encouraged and we will all be strengthened in our faith and in our relationship with you. Thank you for hearing our prayers, for it is in Jesus' name we prayed. 
And God's people said, Amen and Amen. Praise God. Now, the topic of what I want to share with you today is how to bounce back from life's setbacks. How to what? How to bounce back from life's setbacks. You know, life is full of ups and downs. You know, if you're alive today, you will experience tragedy at some point in life. It may not be, it may not be in your life, but somebody close to you. If you're alive, you will experience setbacks. You will experience disappointment sometimes. Sometimes you will lose stuff. Sometimes you even lose loved ones. It is unavoidable. That's the world that we live in. And the reason that that's the case is because we live in a broken world. Things don't always work as planned. And you know, Satan, the Bible calls him the, the, the God of this world. He's the wicked God of this world. And the Bible tells us that he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So th that's the reason why we always face some of these challenges that we see in life. And you know, the reason why that keeps on happening is because that's the price that we pay for rejecting God. That's the price that we pay for kicking God out of our lives and kicking God out of our nation and kicking God out of our schools. That's the price that we pay. But the good news is what the Bible tells us in Psalm 34 verse 19. It says this, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Let me say that again. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. You know what that means? That means don't necessarily expect less afflictions. Rather, expect more deliverances. Expect more miracles. Expect more of God's grace to handle the challenges that life throws at us. So it's not what you go through that's really important. It's how you respond to the things you go through. It's how you respond to the experiences that you have in life. That's what really matters. It's what you do after the setback that matters. After the tragedy or after the difficulty or after the challenge. It's what we do after that that really makes a difference. And that's what will determine the future. That's what will determine our destiny. That's what will determine whether or not you succeed or fail in life as a child of God. You know, I remember a story that I heard many t years ago, and, and, and I've shared this story before, but it, but it bears repeating. Uh, uh, around 100 years ago, two shoe salesmen were sent to India by their different shoe manufacturing companies, and they were asked to go to, um, uh, to India to scout out and to work out you know, what kind of shoes the people need so that they could send their shoes to India and sell them to the people there. Well, when the two of them got there, they realized that nobody was wearing shoes. And one of them went back and sent a telegram back home and he said, don't send shoes, nobody wears them here. Amen. He said, don't send shoes because nobody wears shoes here. But the other salesman, he sent a telegram home to, and this is what he said. He said, send many shoes because no one has shoes here. Can you see? They saw the same problem. They saw the same situation. One said, let's forget it. We can't do anything about it. One said, send all the shoes that's possible because we can do something about it. So that's what I mean when I said it is not really what you go through that's important. It's how you deal with it. It's how you see it. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, some people see the cup half empty while others see the cup half full. Which kind of person are you? Are you the kind of person that sees things half empty or are you the kind of person that sees things half full? It is all a matter of perspective. Praise the name of Jesus. But the good news is that you can train yourself to see what is there and not what is not there. Let me say that again. You can train yourself to see what is there, not what is not there. You can learn to see what you have, not what you don't have. 
and, and it's a slight difference in perspective and how you see things, but it makes all the difference to how your life will go. Now, in our text, David and his men were having a very horrific day. The text that we read earlier on today tells us that they came back from a battle and when they got home, everything had been destroyed. The Bible says the Amalekites came and looted their village and took everything of value. They took their cattle, they took their harvest, they took their possessions, they took their spouses, their husbands, their, their wives and their children. They took everything away. And not only that, they burnt the city to the ground. Imagine you coming back from battle and you get home and your house is burnt to the ground. Imagine your wagons for farming burnt to the ground. Imagine all your things burnt to the ground. That's what was going on in this particular story. Well, the Bible says that these men, these battle-hardened men wept and they continued to weep until they had no more strength. It's okay to weep and to shed tears when you're in pain. It's okay to cry when you're hurting. In fact, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 15, it says, weep with those who weep. So it's okay to cry. Even the Bible tells us that Jesus himself at the tomb of Lazarus, the Bible says he wept. So it's okay. If Jesus could cry, then it's okay for you and I to cry if we're going through pain. But I like what the Bible says in uh, Psalm 30 verse 5. It says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In other words, we sh we it's okay to cry when we need to, but you know, we should start to trust God for joy to come in the morning. You know, the problem comes when crying leads to negative behavior, when crying leads to negative choices and negative action. And that's what we see in this story because David's men became negative. And not only that, they, they were looking for a scapegoat to blame for what had happened in their, in, in their family. And who did they choose? Yes, you, you guessed it right. They chose David. They chose the leader. He was going to be the scapegoat and they were planning to stone him. In other words, it was his fault that all this had happened to them. The Bible tells us, it says in verse 6 of that uh, scripture, it says, Now David was greatly distressed. Why? Because the people spoke of stoning him. Because the souls of all the people were grieved. Every man for his son and his daughter. But then the Bible tells us something amazing. It says, But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Ladies and gentlemen, you see, when life is tough, don't be tempted to throw stones. Don't be tempted to pull other people down. Don't be tempted to find a scapegoat to blame for what's going on in your life. Don't overreact is what I'm trying to say. When life is tough with you, don't, uh, uh, you know, don't start to get angry with people or, or even get angry with God. You know, there are people who, when life is tough, they stop going to church. But you shouldn't do that because that's a backward move. When, when, when there are challenges in your life, that's not the time to isolate yourself from people who love you and who care for you. And many times that's what we do when we have challenges in our lives. We run away from people and we run away from God. And we run away from the people that God has put around us to help us in that season. And this sometimes when life is tough, what do people do? People give up. People quit. People throw in the towel. And they become negative. And the lesson I want you to learn from that is what, when you are under pressure, be careful not to make things worse. You can make things worse by reacting negatively. You can make things worse by saying whatever pops into your mind. You can, you can make things worse by just, by just talking instead of thinking, instead of asking God to show you why you are in the situation that you're in and asking him to open your eyes to see a way out. Because here's what happens. It only makes things worse. It doesn't make things better. When you have been, when you're having a challenge in your life, don't make things worse. Well, David didn't allow his pain to make him bitter. He didn't allow his pain to make him angry or to make him quit or to make him reactive. Instead, he showed us what a man after God's heart ought to do. When you are going through a challenge, David showed us exactly what to do. And I want you to 
take uh, notice of this today because these are, there are three things that David did that you and I need to do, especially when we're going through a tough time. And I want to talk to you about those three things very quickly right now. Now, here are the things that David did. Number one, the first thing we learned that David did, the Bible says, he strengthened himself in the Lord. Yes, he strengthened himself in the Lord. The Bible says in verse 6, but David strengthened himself in the Lord. Now, the Bible doesn't give us details on how he strengthened himself, but we can make intelligent guesses as to what he did. Now, what would you do or what would I do today if we want to strengthen ourselves in the Lord? Well, first of all, if I want to strengthen myself in the Lord, I would remind myself of the covenant that I have with God. I will remind myself that God loves me, that God cares about me, and that God has a covenant to protect and to keep me. That's what I would do, and I wouldn't be surprised if David did the same thing. I would remind myself that God promised to protect me, that God promised to provide for me. I'll remind myself, I'll go to the Bible and remind myself that God promised to favor me, and he promised to deliver me, hallelujah. I'll remind myself, like the Bible says, that the righteous may fall seven times, but the Lord will raise him up. He will rise up again. Hallelujah. Now, that's what the Bible says. So I would remind myself of that. Yes, I've fallen. Yes, the things are bad, but I'm going to rise up again. Praise the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16 says, The righteous may fall seven times, but he will rise again. So I would remind myself that Though I may fall, I will rise again. Praise the name of Jesus. Not only that, if I wanted to encourage myself in the Lord, I would remind myself of the, of the many times that God has come through for me in the past. I'll, I'll remind myself of the miracles that God has done for me. I'll remind myself of the breakthroughs, of the testimonies of God's favor in my life. In other words, I will, I will refocus my mind on the goodness of God, on the mercies of God. The Bible says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. I'll remind myself of those things because I know those things will cause me to be strong in the Lord. I'll wait on the Lord, like the Bible says. Those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. So I'll spend time in God's presence, wait on Him, and I know that if I do that, then I'll be strong in the Lord. Well, I believe that's what David did too. David ran to God. He ran. He, he didn't run away from God. He didn't blame people. He ran to God. He understood that he had a better chance of dealing with setbacks if he had God on his side. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, that's why Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. I, you know, I think he waited on God. He took time to wait on God. And I believe that's why God strengthened him. So, number one, David strengthened himself in the Lord. And when you are going through challenges in life, you too can strengthen yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah. Secondly, the Bible tells us that he changed his focus. You know, he, the, the men were focusing on the tragedy, but David focused on the Lord. The, the men were focusing on the problem. David was focusing on the solution. So the second thing that David did was he, he changed his focus from tragedy mode to solution mode. Let me say that again. He changed his focus from tragedy mode to solution mode. In other words, how can this thing be solved? This issue that we're going through, this challenge that we have, uh, where, where can I get solutions from? Where, how can I trust God for a solution to this? That's what he did. And that's why the Bible tells us that he asked the priest to bring the ephod. Now, of course, the ephod was what the people, what the priest and the people used in those days to hear from God. When they didn't know what God's plan for their life was or when they wanted to know what God wanted them to do or not to do, they will bring the ephod with the priest and the priest will ask God for answers and, and God will give him answers using that ephod as an instrument or a tool. In other words, the ephod was a tool of guidance that God used to guide his people. So the Bible says, and David inquired from the Lord saying, shall I pursue after the troop? In other words, we have a problem. Lord, what shall I do about it? The Bible says, he asked, Lord, shall I overtake them? And he answered, 
This is God answering. And God answered, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. So because David asked God a point blank question and asked for God's wisdom, God told him exactly what was going to happen. If he pursued those people, he would overtake them at some point and he would recover all. Now, God didn't tell him where the people were. God didn't give him details. God just gave him a word to get him to start moving forward. Hallelujah. And you know, I think really that's what God is doing for us even right now. God is giving us a word because he wants us to move forward. He wants us to advance to the next stage. It's time to move forward. It's time to advance, praise the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what, what has happened in the past, what has happened in the last few months, we can move forward even from now. And, and, and that's what God is saying to us. And that's what God said to him. He said, if you would pursue, then you would overtake the enemy and you would recover all. Now, David understood that the more you focus on the problem, the bigger the problem becomes. Amen? And, and that's why when David's men were focusing on the problem, he didn't join them. When they were focusing on the challenges, the challenges they were focusing on deflated them. He focused on the covenant that he had with God and the covenant that he had with God strengthened him. And that's the difference between winners and losers. Winners focus on the solution. They focus on the God of the solution. Amen. Uh, those who fail often focus on the problems and the challenges and it deflates them and they're not able to succeed in life. And, and, and as we come out of this pandemic, I want to encourage you to refocus as well. And I want you to focus on the wisdom of God, asking God to show you what you need to do to be able to overcome the challenges of the pandemic that we've had for the last few months. So ask God for wisdom, ask God for guidance. And when you do that, trust him to move you forward to the next stage. Hallelujah. The third thing that David did was he gathered his men together and he took positive action. Number three, D David gathered his men together and he took positive action. What, what was the action? He moved forward. He didn't just stay there. He didn't just wait. He didn't just stop and, and, and become a victim. He, 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 didn't, he didn't just uh, sit in the corner afraid to move forward. He didn't accept defeat. He didn't stay stagnant. No, instead he attacked the problem. He created momentum. Amen? He created momentum and the rest, as, as they say, is history. He began to move forward. And the lesson that I want you to take away from that is that you can't bounce back if you don't take action. Let me say that again. You can't bounce back if you don't take action, if you don't get in the race, if you don't start moving forward, then nothing is going to happen. Hallelujah. You can't do that. In fact, write this statement down. God, God's power kicks in when you move forward. Let me say that again. God's power kicks in when you move forward, when you take action, when you pray about the situation and you start to act in line with what you believe is right, then you know what? The power of God kicks in on your behalf and you get your miracle. If you remember, that's what we read last week. We read about the four lepers who, you know, they were, they, they were all uh, going to starve to death. But th these four lepers decided to move forward. These four lepers decided to, to advance. And um, as they began to advance, the power of God became available for them. And the power of God drove the enemy away for them. Hallelujah. Well, the same thing would happen to us if we would start to move forward. If we would start to advance in the next few days and weeks, God will move the enemy out of the way. And the promise that God gave us at the beginning of this year will still come to pass for you and me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, number one, David strengthened himself in the Lord. He got connected to God. Number two, David changed his focus. His men focused on the tragedy and it deflated them, but he focused on his covenant with God and it strengthened him. And number three, David took action to improve the situation he was in. He didn't sit there idle, he began to move forward. And I want to encourage us not to sit idle, but to keep on moving forward. Hallelujah. And of course, the result we got 
is that God restored everything he thought he had lost and much more. Let me read what the Bible says in verse 18 of 1 Samuel chapter 30. It says, So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives, and nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. And then it says, David recovered all. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy to someone watching me today that before the end of this year, you would recover anything the enemy has stolen from you in the name of Jesus. And not just what he has stolen from you, but much more than he has stolen from you is what you will recover before the year runs out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a prophecy. Take that right now and run with it. And they return home with a lot more than the enemy took away from them. Isn't that amazing? They went out without anything and they came back with much more than the enemy had stolen from them. As we come out of this coronavirus pandemic, the question I want to end with today is simply this. How can we strengthen ourselves in the Lord? And how can we focus on solutions instead of focusing on the problems? How can we focus on the promises of God to to, to, to bless us, to cause us to be fruitful instead of the challenges of the virus that we've had for the last few months. How can we do those things? How can we bounce back? How can we recover all that has been lost? Amen? As an individual, whether it's lost, whether you've lost some time, uh, whether you've lost some productivity, whether it's been your job situation that's lost or some resources that you were hoping to get by now that has not come, uh, is not there anymore, or, or maybe some finances or some, some, maybe it's even your confidence. What, whatever it is that you've lost, the question is how can we recover that? Because the Bible says we can recover all. The prophecy that God gave David was that he can recover all. And that's the prophecy that I'm sharing with you today. You too can recover all in the name of Jesus. And how can we recover all that we've lost as a church? You know, we've not met for a few months now. And that has meant that there are some things that we would have, we would have hoped to get by now that we haven't got yet. But all of that, I have this confidence in God that we will recover all before the year runs out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, let me offer you some suggestions today. If we're going to recover all, number one, we must start by strengthening ourselves in the Lord. And the question is, how do we do that? How can we strengthen ourselves in the Lord? Well, we can do that by going back to God's promises. What did God say to us at the beginning of the year? Well, let's go back to that promise. For those of you who were there, you remember that God spoke to us clearly that this was going to be a remarkable year of fruitfulness. Well, let's go back to that promise and say, Lord, how can this year still be a remarkable year of fruitfulness? And God will begin to show us how, because it's very, very possible. Amen. In fact, let me say it this way. The promise of God still stands. Amen. I love that song that says the promise still stands. Well, well, that's what, that's what I want to say to you. The promise of God still stands. The promise of God doesn't change because circumstances change. The promise of God does not depend on the economy. It doesn't depend on the government. It doesn't depend on anybody. It depends on the word of the Lord and you and I believe in what God says. That's all it depends on. So the promise still stands because God can be trusted. The Bible says that heaven and earth can pass away, but not one jot of God's word will go unfulfilled. Amen. Another thing we need to do to strengthen ourselves in the Lord is to remind ourselves of the faithfulness of God. All through, all through the challenges that we've had, God has been faithful to us. You've been well. Even if you were sick, you were, you've recovered. That is God's faithfulness. Amen? So remind yourself of the faithfulness of God. Remind yourself of the past testimonies of God protecting you, of God providing for you, of God making a way when it looked like there was no way. To strengthen ourselves in the Lord, we also need to surround ourselves with people of faith, people that are positive, people that God can use to encourage us, people that are spiritual. That's what you need to do. You have to create time for that 
And as you do that, you will find yourself being strengthened again in the word of the Lord. And as you get strengthened, the faith and the confidence and the boldness to keep on moving forward will suddenly come to you because you are strengthening yourself in the Lord. Also, you can refocus this year by doing three things. Let me tell you what they are. Number one, I want to encourage you to revisit the goals that you set at the beginning of the year. I know some of us have set our goals and we just left those sheets of paper and we just thrown them away because of what has happened. But I want to challenge you and encourage you to go and pick up those sheets again and to look at those sheets again, to, to look at the goals that you set this year for yourself, to sit down and to find solutions, discipline yourself to sit down and to find solutions to how you can still achieve those goals. You see, because if God uh, restored everything that David lost, he can restore everything that you think you may have lost. So re revisit the goals that you set at the beginning of this year and force yourself to sit down and find solutions to how you can achieve those goals. Another thing I'm going to encourage you to do is to ruthlessly cut out all time wasters from your life. See, we've got six more months to go for this year to run out. But in those six months, we can do twice as much as we would normally do if we will put aside time wasters. Whatever time wasters may be in your life, I want to challenge you to get rid of them. Ruthlessly cut them out until you catch up on lost time. Amen? Until you catch up on lost time. And that means for some of us, it means you must minimize your TV watching. It means, you, you know, you can't watch Netflix all day long anymore. It means that you're going to have to put, you know, a bit of your time into something that's going to be productive. Instead of just sitting down on social media, talking to friends, you've got to put some of those time wasters aside and, and press in to finishing the things that you need to finish before the end of this year. Now, it would take discipline, it would take discipline, but you have the discipline because Christ lives on the inside of you in the name of Jesus. Amen? And the third thing I want to say very quickly is discipline yourself to walk on your goals every day. Discipline yourself to what? To walk on your goals every day until you can say you're up to date, until you can say that everything you wanted to accomplish this year is done. Discipline yourself. Create extra time. You know, don't just sit down and, 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 you know, and waste time. No. Say, I'm going to work on my goals today. You know, I have a goal to write a book and to finish a book that I, uh, that book has been taking me forever. But you know what? I have made up my mind to discipline myself three or four times a week to sit down and to write that book and to write another chapter and to write another chapter until it's finished. Well, we're all going to have to make some decisions to discipline ourselves. That is how we bounce back. That is how we strengthen ourselves in the Lord. That is how the things that God promised us, we enforce them to happen for us in the name of Jesus. And that is how you can start to bounce back from today and see God restoring everything the enemy has tried to steal from you. So I hope you will arise and take action. I hope you will do something based on the word that you've received. Because you see, until you do something about it, nothing is going to happen. Let me say that again. Until you do something about it, nothing is going to happen. Until you decide to move forward, you will stay in the same place. Until you decide to advance, you will stay in the same place of stagnation. But that is not your portion. Amen? It is not your portion in Jesus' name. So I'm going to encourage us to respond to God in prayer right now and ask the Lord to help us with these things. Let us pray. I want you to take a minute to express your gratitude to God for his word that he brings us a word every day, every week that helps us to make progress. Thank him for the wisdom that comes from his word. Thank him for the instruction that he continues to give us. Praise God. And thank him for the solutions to our challenges that we see in his word on a daily basis. Now ask God to strengthen you. Ask him to change your focus. Ask him to help you to see that his ways are higher than your ways. And ask him to help you take action. Positive, proactive action. Bold action. Praise God. Ask him to help you to take that action. In Jesus' name. 
Father, we thank you again for your kindness and your goodness. We thank you so much for your express word that you speak to us. We thank you for the wisdom that comes from your word. And we thank you for your instructions and for even the solutions that you give us to the challenges that we have in life. Lord, we ask you to help strengthen us and help to teach us how to strengthen ourselves in you. Help us to change our focus from the problems that we have to the author and the finisher of our faith, the solutions to the problems that we have. And we ask you, Father God, to help us to take action, appropriate, proactive action, as soon as you show us what to do, that we will not be lazy, but we'll press on. We'll create momentum in our lives and we'll see victory and progress in the name of Jesus. You said, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask. Well, we ask you today for wisdom, wisdom to navigate through the next few months as we trust you for the, the, this uh, promise of yours to us to come to pass. The, the promise of this year being fruitful for us as we trust you for that. Help us with wisdom to know what to do in the name of Jesus. Remind us that you're a covenant keeping God. Remind us that you're a miracle worker. Remind us that you love us with an everlasting love and that you care for us. And we pray, Lord God, that you will give us speed and that you will give us momentum, Lord. We pray, Father God, that you will increase our faith and that you will help us to move forward. We, we, we ask that you will help us to recover all that has been stolen from us. Yes, sevenfold restoration is what I'm asking for. Thank you so much for hearing our prayers. We give you glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, as before we close today, I want to also give an opportunity to you if you're watching and you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If, if you're not saved, if you haven't given your life to Christ, then you could do that today. You see, life without Christ is a life of crisis. Yes, that's what it is. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He, he died for you, you see. You see, there's only three things that you need to do. Number one, you need to acknowledge that you're a sinner. You need to know that, yes, I, 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 I'm a sinner. I do what the Bible says I shouldn't do. And you know what? Every sinner needs a Savior. So you need to acknowledge you're a sinner and that you need a Savior. Secondly, you need to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and that he's prepared to forgive you if you ask him to. So that's the second thing you need to do. But the third thing you need to do is you need to confess your sins to him and confess him to be your Lord and Savior. Ask him to be your Lord and Savior and invite him into your life. If you will do that, then you will become a child of God. And when you become a child of God, you start to function at a different level. And the things we're talking about here becomes easy for you to understand because you will have God's Spirit helping you to understand it. So if you'd like to do that, why don't you say this prayer with me very quickly. Just put your hands on your heart, bow your head, and ask God to forgive you. Say, Heavenly Father, I want to receive you into my heart today as my Lord and Savior. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and that I need a Savior. And I believe that you died on the cross to pay the price for my sins. I confess them all to you right now and I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to save me today. Thank you for saving me. I receive your salvation and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for anyone who has prayed that prayer right now. I commit them into your care. I pray that you will continue to touch their heart and that you will continue to reveal yourself to them. Give them the boldness to go to someone and tell them what they have done and send them someone who will help them along the way so that they will continue to grow in their faith as children of God. Thank you so much for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you pray that prayer and you really meant it, I want you to share it with someone. Find someone that you can share it with. Or if you want to, you can email us and let us know what you've done. And we'll try and send you some material to help you along the way in your faith. I just want to say thank you, everybody, again for listening in. Hope you were blessed. And I'll see you next time. 
I pray that you were mightily blessed by that awesome word by our pastor today. How timely was that word? You know, life isn't always smooth sailing. It doesn't always go exactly how we would have liked it to go. But how many of you know that as we've learned today, it's not what we go through that's important, but it's how we respond. That is what is truly important. Exactly what we learned from the story of David today. What did he do? Well, the first thing he did was that he strengthened himself in the Lord. He spent time with God and cried out to him and showed him how he was feeling. And after he, would, he was finished showing God was, how he was feeling, he decided to strengthen himself. He spent time with him. God was able to rejuvenate him and give him grace and mercy to move forward. The second thing was that he had to take his focus away from the issues at hand. And that's what we need to do as well. Sometimes well, after we've spent so much time looking at the problem that we're facing, let's take our focus away from that and look to the one who is going to help us bring a solution. Let's look to the one who can change and turn our situation around. And then the last thing he did was he took action. He moved forward. He didn't allow where he was at to be where he remained, but he took brave steps forward. And as we see from the story, there was victory. So we thank God for what we've learned today. And I hope that every single one of you has taken something amazing that you can apply to your life. Well, now is the time to bring our tithes and our offerings. As always, thank you so much, church, for your continued generosity during these unprecedented times. I know the Lord will continue to bless every single one of us as we continue to support the church and um, give our tithes and offerings just as we normally would. And I want to read a quick scripture um, from Galatians 6 verse 9. It says, And let us not grow weary doing good, for in due season we will reap, amen, if we do not give up. And I truly believe that. Let us not grow weary of doing good. Let us not grow weary of giving to the church as well. Um, I know it feels very different to give remotely, but let us still connect our faith to our offering the same way we would when we're filling out our envelopes at church and we're raising our offering envelopes and trusting God that he will bless that seed. We can do exactly the same online. So let us not grow weary of doing this. Um, let's continue to give faithfully as many of you have been doing already. And let's pray that God will bless his offering today. Okay, well, that's it. That is the end of the service. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and don't forget that we meet on Wednesdays as well at 7.30 here online, 7.30 p.m. Um, and we're going to be sharing the word on Wednesday and, of course, on Sunday as well next week for our online service at 11 a.m. sharp. Well, that's it. Let us share the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And let us share our confession together as well. I trust God for a remarkable year of fruitfulness. I will endeavour to hear God's voice clearly, obey his instructions carefully, and serve his agenda willingly every day. As a result, everything God promised will come to me speedily this year. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you again so much for joining us today. Have a blessed week.